see like the like the other screen. I wonder if it's gonna come through. Hello folks and um, welcome to, um, I've lost track of the numbers, so welcome to the next in the series of uh, Dharma Outreach, Dharma Talks. And um, we're fortunate enough today to have a uh, friend, good friend of mine, Daryl, who's uh, agreed, to, agreed to suffer us for... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> at least for half hour. So, Daryl, welcome. Thank you so much for agreeing to come on. Thanks for having me. You're, you're so very welcome. Um, well, I, I guess I'm going to start with our kind of, uh, with our generic question, which might actually be, um, which might actually be not the usual answer. Um, because We've kind of known each other, although we've never met in person for uh, for quite some years now. Um, can I ask then, did Buddhist practice have any kind of place I in your recovery? To be honest, no. Like I, I didn't actually find any of it until after I after I got sober. Just kind of did it all on my own. I didn't think I needed anything or anyone, and then I kind of I found I found like-minded people, you know, punks, people who thought outside of the box, and people who looked at things differently. And you know, I didn't have to go to the AAs, didn't have to do twelve steps, didn't have to do NA. It was just more we could sit and shoot the shit. It was it was nice. So I kind of wish I knew it was there, be you know when I first started, but it might have made things a little easier. <laughs> right, okay, so, so this, is, this is kind of interesting, certainly to me personally. So, so if you don't mind me asking, you, you, you've, you work the steps to, or, or not? No, I, I, I tried the steps, and believe it or not, every time I tried to get sober and I went to AA, I ended up relapsing. It, it almost seemed like it was a, a competition it was like I did this and you did that and I did more and no I did more and it got it got old so every time I heard it it was almost like it made me think I missed it like I, I wanted to do it so I kept doing it so hell I don't think I've been to an AA meeting in nine years right okay so the 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 um the Buddhist influence aspects then came after, came from when you were hanging out with the likes of Michael and... Yeah, it was, you know, meeting people like Michael and then uh, I had a friend actually give me uh, Noah Levine's book there, The Dharma Punks, and I read that and, you know, to, to see these people, like I said, that were like-minded and they found peace and and harmony and and love and joy with everything around them it was it was nice and then so i kind of dived into it a little more to see if it was something that i would like and uh it's just nice because it's not a religion you know it's it's what you want it to be right right so did, did you used to go to uh, refuge meetings or not right nope. okay all right <laughs> It's it's really it's really interesting, um, <clears throat> because from everyone we've spoken to, um, you, you, you're kind of almost unique. Um, so it was that whole. It was that whole kind of almost punk based with a Dharma aspect. <laughs> camaraderie that uh, that right okay yeah i just you know and then i i found you and i you and i just we started talking and we had like i can't even what it's been now what two or three years i think and just 
you know, from talking with you and asking you questions and then doing the stuff with Mike and just kind of doing our own little groups and helping each other. It was really nice. It was just, it was nice to know it wasn't a competition and you didn't have to feel like you, you had to outdo each other. And there was, there was nothing but love and compassion and, you know, and the days, you know, where if I feel like I, I wanted to jump off the cliff and, and go back to it, all I had to do was send a text message or a phone call and say, Hey, something don't feel right. And you answered the message or Mike answered the message or, you know, the other guys that were in the group answered the message. It wasn't, you know, you didn't force me to do anything. You just listen. You showed compassion and love when I needed it the most. Well, so thank you for that. Um, I, I think for me, it's very, it's very heartwarming t to me personally to hear that, because um, I, I make no secret about the fact that the practicality of a lot of Buddhist teachings is what I'm all about, not not the ritual ceremony and uh, and the rest of it. Um, so thank you for that, Daryl. Yeah, I appreciate that personally. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it's the it's the truth. You know, you don't you know you don't have to go to a temple. You don't have to go to any of it. Church, temple, a monastery, whatever. It's you know it's in your heart and it's it's the people around you. And you know, I, I've addressed my concerns with the, with. Buddhist practices and, you know, people telling me what I had to do and how I had to do it to make me a better person. But at the end of the day, it's, it's the people who care about you and the people who show you love and, you know, you show your, your self love is what matters. Yeah, and, for sure. You know, the laughing, I mean, I mean, look at the conversations you and I've had over the years. I mean, some of it don't even, <laughs> don't even make sense i don't think people would believe half the stuff we talked about <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what i mean i mean some of the stuff we've talked about well i almost wonder if we could probably get locked up just talking about it <laughs> <laughs> well, probably, probably best we don't talk about it again on a recorded tv uh, <laughs> 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 you, but it's it's just amazing, you know, how we can all come together as, you know, one uh, over the same thing, you know, our, you know, addiction, it doesn't matter what your addiction is, we all come together, we help each other. And, you know, that to me, that just, that represents, in my opinion, in my heart, Buddhism, you know, we're, we're here for each other, we love each other, and we have compassion and kindness for each other I, I I would very much agree with you I mean I, I I've said for many years and it's been and it's been reinforced in the time that I've been here in Massachusetts um, working with Marshall that there are many more people out there that are practicing the basics of Buddhism without ever having to have that Buddhist label on it or even knowing about it. You know, I mean, I get people that, you know, oh, you eat meat, Buddhists don't eat meat. You are, you are an alcoholic and a drug addict. You can't be that if you're a Buddhist, like, <laughs> you know, it, it's what you make it. It's how you, your perspective of it. You know, I turned my life around and now it's opened with love and compassion. And that makes me and my heart a Buddhist and what I do, you know, I, I open my heart, my, my door, whatever, to anybody, if they need it, you know, and I don't, the label of modern things, it just don't, I don't like it. You know, I think that's why I never fit in with AA or Maybe that's why I never made it through a full rehab when I always got asked to leave or I just left. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't follow the rules, I guess. No, but the, I mean, the important thing is that we, we are all sitting here today and, you know, 
we, the, the three of us have all been in the same situation. We don't make any, we don't make any secret of that. Um, no, you know, I mean, it's, it's amazing. I look back because, you know, I just celebrated my 10th birthday, you know, as I call, because that's the day I finally, I was reborn and shit, 10 years. I think where the hell did 10 years go? And like, good God, like, I mean, there's days I wake up and I'm like, oh yeah, okay. You know, all right. Yeah. Then there's days I wake up and I go, man, how the hell am I still here? (laughs) (laughs) But I'll tell you what, I wouldn't change it for the world. No, no, I, I, no, I, I, I don't think I would either, to be honest with you. Um, you know, and it's and it's tough, and it continues to it continues to be tough in in, in lots of ways. Um, you know, I mean, uh, I get, I've got, and I still get, you know, a lot of criticism for the for the way I am, and a lot of that is about. A lot of that is about my honesty, uh, you know, and about the the way I just um, people tell me I, I I disclose too much. I'm too open, but I don't know. That keeps me. That it keeps me where I where I need to be, you know. Um, What's lying going to get you? What's being a closed book going to get you? Yeah. Right. Well, it comes back down to the. To, you know, it really does. And this is. I, I'm finding this a fascinating conversation, as always, when I ever I talk to you. But be, because of the because of the non-Buddhist Buddhist aspects, the it's you know, it's it's Buddhist without being labelled as Buddhist. You know, a lot of the shit that we do. Mm-hmm. It, it it truly truly is and and that's what people you know people come to my house and they're like well what's all this buddhist stuff you don't practice that do you and it's like every day i i do something i'm, I'm a better person than i was yesterday and to me that's all that matters as long as i'm better than i was yesterday and continue to be better you know better for me better for my family better for my daughter and at the end of the day, that's all that matters is me being better at that. It's it, it certainly is interesting the the, the way that um, you know the the way you've come to it. Marshall, have you got anything you want to throw in there? So, Daryl, um, can 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 you see me? Because I can't like we just see you. Can you see me talking on the screen there? I can see you. I was, was going to say right, you. All right, all right. <laughs> I was wondering if you were there. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is the first time I'm meeting you, and I think this is great, you know, like, um, you know, this uh, relationship that you built with Sujatu, and him and I have a similar relationship, and uh, we have similar kind of, like, you know, feelings about, you know, like, the whole industrialized complex of American westernized Buddhism, and, um, you know, our mission and our goal is to, you know, share just the basic tools of Buddhism with people as an option in their own personal self-development and recovery and health and things of this nature. And, uh, and, I, and like, that's kind of how we all kind of vibe on that same level. And I went through the whole, you know, since I was a kid, the whole recovery process with the 12 steps and the people telling me this and, you know, I mean, my recovery is better than your recovery. By the way, you got to believe in God for it to work. And, you know, that was always like, those were always stumbling blocks for me and it was discouraging and the and the more discouraged I got the more I went back out there and the more crafty I was about avoiding getting in trouble and you know my behaviors would you know they they exacerbated into you know uh, more problematic behaviors Um, and ultimately Buddhism was the thing that uh, finally allowed me to find this recovery for myself and um, finding other people that have experienced that and being, being involved in this project with Sujatu and being able to go to places and let people know that it exists, it's available if they're, they're interested and it's tools they can use. Um, you know, that's been a, a, a real privilege uh, as a Buddhist, you know, like I might not be the coolest guy in the room at the, or the richest guy in the room at the, you know, the Western Buddhist retreat. But uh, the one thing that we do got, and that's all of us, we got heart. And, yeah. um, you know, we ain't trying to convince nobody or nothing. We just is, we is what we is, you know? <laughs> it, it, it's, it's the truth. I mean, we are who we are, and 
you you either like us or you don't and you know we take you for who you are and it's it's funny you know you brought up the the aa it just made me think you know they make you you have to believe in god i got kicked out of an aa meeting one time because i wouldn't pray and the guy said you need to pray to god and i looked right at him and i said god didn't get me drunk and god didn't get me sober and the guy told me i couldn't be in the meeting with him anymore I remember I left, and the first thing I did, I went and drank. Oh, man. <laughs> and then it's, I meet people like, you know, you guys. And it doesn't matter what I say, what I do. I could go in circles for hours on something, and you guys just listen. No no judgment, no no argument, no nothing. You just, you know, I, don't, I just met you, Marshall, and I feel like I could I could call you tonight and spill my guts about something if I had to, and I know you would listen. Oh, yeah, please. Yeah, it's something I, 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 I get that co- constantly, so I, I, I'm always there for that. You, you, you know, I would, I'm hoping when this is done, I'm hoping I can get your phone number and we can start a, a friendship and a relationship. You know, it's it's funny hearing you call him Sujato because, you know, I'm, I call him, I call you Graham. I don't know what you <laughs> want to call, but, you know, I've I remember I called you Sujato, and you were like, "No, you can call me Graham. It's okay." <laughs> no, I've 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 done that for 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 years. People, yeah. I, I I've done that for years. I I like people to, you know, I always tell people you can call me everything you like as long as you don't call me late for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I won't call you late for breakfast. Okay, we'll make sure we're on time. I I call him Sujatu uh, because like I call him by his formal monk name is because like that's what he represents like in, in my mind he represents like the effort that was put forth like he stumbles into things like things just happen to him by accident and like he's like an accidental monk and it's hilarious to me <laughs> so I always call him formally. The first time I talked to him and he told me his story I was like, damn man, there's this 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 can't be real like. You, you're bullshitting me. Like, you made this. <laughs> you wrote everything out, and you're just reading it off a script. It, it's like, first of all, you you shouldn't even be alive, the shit you've been through. <laughs> you, you, you're, like, better than any Motley Crue book I've ever read. Like, you need to put this out there so people can hear it, because you are the... You're the coolest monk. I mean, hands down. Like when I tell people, I'm like, yeah, one of my good friends is a monk. They're like, what? I'm like, you should talk to him. And they're like, I thought they didn't talk. And I'm like, no, you need. I'm like, you need to talk to this monk. Like you will, <laughs> you will truly understand what amazingness is and what you can overcome. And uh, I you think uh, I, I, I thank you for that because I still believe it or not, and I mean, I'm at least twice a week telling that crazy story now to folks right i still i still catch myself thinking now i'm sure that can't actually have happened right <laughs> but and, and and it's a minimum of twice a week now that i that i tell that that story um and yeah it's it's crazy and i kind of hope that um i always su- i don't suggest people go off to thailand um, to, to, to get off the pipe, but it's, you know, it kind of worked for me. So I try and spin it around and say, well, it's, it's the environment. It's, it doesn't have to be the other side of the world, but you need to get out of that environment that's causing you all the shit you're in at the minute. Um, so, yeah, I kind of still feel the same way as you do about it. I still can't quite believe it myself. Uh, maybe yeah. maybe I'll, uh, I I I really ought to get the book and the uh, and the movie rights out there. Listen, <laughs> it needs to be. You have to go in open minded when you read this book or go watch a movie because I'm telling you, <laughs> the first time you told me you went to Thailand to get off the pipe, I was like, did he just tell me he got off the pipe and became a monk? Like, is this, <laughs> is this even possible? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like there's no way this man just told me he got off the pipe and went to Thailand and became a, and now he's a monk. <laughs> Most people they think of a monk it's you're this you know you're a bean pole of a person you walk around no tattoos no beard no robes or all robes and here you are covered in tattoos. You move from England 
to Thailand to get off the pipe, and now you are a monk. <laughs> like that right there, it just needs to be your title. Off and of the course, pipe, and of, co a monk. of course, then after 11 years in Thailand, I went to Chicago. It just doesn't seem possible. I mean, Marshall, come on. I mean, the first time you heard this, I mean, tell me. Well, I'm not wrong. Like, you just, your jaw was hanging on the floor, right? Yeah, so, like, I, I found, uh, I'll tell a real quick the story. Is I, I had, um, you know, I had a cell phone, um, access to a cell phone. Um, you know, I was away on an extended vacation, and I was looking into Buddhist stuff. I was getting ready to reintegrate into society, and, uh, he popped up on like the Facebook feed and I was reading his story and I was looking at him with like, you know, in Thailand with like, you know, like in the monastery with the Thai people. And, uh, you know, I was fascinated. And then when I, the more I learned and, you know, his mission to, you know, kind of share Buddhist practice with the, you know, people that are out there struggling with the, the same stuff we struggle with, I was like all about it. So I just started following him. And then I don't know if he remembers, but when I was on the train one day, you know, just piecing my life back together, I ended up calling him. And uh, I told him, like, you know, he'd planned on coming out here. I said, well, I'm interested in, you know, helping you and getting involved. And, you know, I think he just kind of was like, you know, he gets calls from many people. He's just some, another Jamook just kind of reaching out, you know, you know, with some bullshit reason or whatever. And, uh, you know, I was serious about it, you know, like this stuff you know, like helping people and giving people the stuff that they need to improve their lives. And in this case, Buddhist Dharma, it's, it, it means a, a lot to me. I know because I know it works because I've tested, tried it. It's effective. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's funny too. You know, we have laughs. It's, it's enjoyable, you know, and, and it's fun. So you can enjoy it. Exactly. Because it's different. It's not, you, you don't have to follow a regimen. It's not you don't have a sponsor beating something into your head saying, if you don't do step three, it's never going to work. <laughs> okay. Well, sure. Whatever. Like the, the, to me, the book didn't work. And I'm, and if it works for you, great. Like hands down, I'm happy that it works for you because you found your niche, but this is what works for us. And I think, you know why it works is because it's controlled chaos and that's what we're used to. I, th yeah. I think I think that's a lot to do with it. I I as you probably gather, I, I've never done well with authority of any kind. Um, no, I, you I've never. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that is that you 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 know organised chaos is just about is just about right. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work for everyone. It, it really doesn't work for everyone. But it works for those folks that are kind of on the outside of the of the norm, you know? Exactly. I mean, 90% of us have always been outsiders. We were the skaters, the, the, the dirty punks, the people who just, we felt like we never fit in, the, the outcasts, the people that maybe they had a mental illness that they didn't understand, you know? And then you put us all together and it's like, holy shit, we all fit together. Like we're, we're a tornado and we all come together and this is wonderful. And to find people that feel that same way you feel and basically all their cylinders fire the same way. And you know that they have your back and you have theirs. It's the greatest feeling in the world. And I, I love, I love every minute of being, being with you guys and, you know, to, to, to share this with other people. Like, you know, I mean, I belong in other organizations and, they, I tell everybody, I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid. I'm not shy. I don't hide from who I am and what I am. I'm a, I'm a bipolar addict, and I, it don't bother me. I can share that with the world now. It's, it's the greatest thing. And if people can learn from from us, or call us and just talk to us, that's even better. You know, I don't. I'm not going to judge you for what you do or what you continue to do. I mean, I got. I don't know about you. I have friends that are in recovery. There's, they still do certain things where most people might think, eh, you shouldn't be doing anything if you're in recovery. Well, maybe that's not their problem. Maybe that still works for them. It's maybe, maybe that's, yeah, it's everyone's, everyone's recovery is their recovery. Yeah. I have a, I have a big issue with, with, with anyone that says you're doing it the wrong way. 
if you if you you know if you're still alive and you're doing better than you were yesterday, what can I say? What can you say to anyone? Well, it, two, it, th two thumbs up for it, that. It, you know what? And, and I'm going to share on that too. Imagine being in a community and having friends, and then you decide to start smoking some marijuana or something, or if you're an opioid dependent, you decide to have some drinks. And now you're afraid to tell that community what you've done because you're afraid you're going to get ostracized or you're going to get judged. Like, there ain't none of that over here. Like, we just support each other no matter what. You know, like, I've been waiting for Sujatu to have a, a mental break for months now. and it, yeah, But I'm ready to support him. I'm ready. You know, like, we're just here to support. We don't care. Like, we're here for like, each other. You know, I got friends. Like, I don't drink no more, but I, I, still, smoke, I still smoke marijuana. Does that bother you? No, that's, hey, that's cool, man. It's, that's you. I don't. I don't care. I still, I still love you. You're, you're my friend. You're my family, and I'm going to be there to support you. Just like I know, if if I wanted to do that, you would support me. And that's what we need to be. And that's why this community is, to me, is the greatest, the greatest community. I don't, I, I don't have to do something I don't want to do. I can be me. I can act like me, and it's, and we can laugh about it. And, and we can be serious, but we can also laugh. I mean, hell, Graham, you and I, I mean, we've had hours of conversations. And I think when I was done, I think I had more tears rolling down my eyes from laughing than I have in a long time. <laughs> and that, uh, and, uh, Darryl, that's what it's all about. Isn't it? It's about that. It's about, it's about us being able to find these connections that, you know, get us through some shit times. It's about being, it's about knowing that there's, you know, I went years where I, I you know, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't admit that to anyone that, that any kind of perceived weakness or anything, you know. But, you know, it's, it's marvellous to have these folks that even if you haven't, if you don't speak to them from one month to the next six months, whatever, that you know you can pick that phone up, you can send that message, and you know, and, and that's really what it's all about. That's really what it's all about. And that's what we need, and that's how we're gonna continue to survive. And as long as we keep putting the word out there and we're there for people, tomorrow's gonna be a good day. For sure. I have now got no idea what the time is. Yeah, we've gone over. We've gone over. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> Right. <laughs> oh no. Okay. No, we haven't quite gone over. It's. Uh, it's. It, we got. We got a couple. Of, we got a couple of minutes. We got a couple of minutes. <laughs> Daryl, I want to thank you for coming on here. I really do appreciate it. And also, I don't know if you've got anything going on for you that you want to plug on here. I don't know how many people will see it. Any events? Any? Any? Any causes you're supporting? Uh, but I always give people that opportunity if they if they have. No, just. Keep keep being you. you. You need anything? Don't don't ever hesitate to reach out. I mean, you can ask these two, and they can always get you in touch with me if you want to know anything or have more questions, or you just hell you want to just call and shoot the shit. I'm game. Thank you. We appreciate that, and that's that's really what we're uh, what we're looking for. And um, actually, we might hit you up off off of here for uh, to see if you'd be interested in doing some maybe virtual speaking commitments for us. But we'll talk about that off a of camera. Yeah. Uh, they, they, that, that, that works. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl, it was great meeting you, great, great talking to you. Um, I'm, I'm glad to make yeah. another connection, you know, another solid uh, Buddhist, you know, like uh, what we talk about, that's true recovery and it's, it's true Dharma, you know, in my mind. Yeah. No, there's, there's no walls and no, we're, we're just, we're an open book and that's what we need to be. The, the stigma's got to stop and what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Daryl, again. And um, I guess we'll wrap it up there. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. you like the, like the other screen.